Hi everyone, welcome to the new video and probably this will be the last theoretical video on the topic of moving charges and magnetism. Now in this picture as you see this is a galvanometer. Okay, this is a galvanometer. Now galvanometer is the instrument that you have used while uh, doing the experiment of meter bridge that is to detect Nandal deflection. Okay. Now in this galvanometer, as you can see, this pointer it is at the middle point. Okay, so this is a zero, and uh, when the current flows in the circuit, okay, so one connection is between this terminal and the other connection is from this terminal. So the current enters this, goes to the galvanometer, and then flows out from the galvanometer. So depending upon the direction of current, whether the current is flowing in this direction or in the opposite direction. The needle, this needle deflects in this direction, in clockwise direction or anti-clockwise direction. Okay, so the galvanometer is basically it is a device which is used to detect small current. Okay, it is a sensitive device which is used to detect small current. Okay, so this is used in uh, meter bridge to determine the null point okay now in this video we are going to talk about moving coil galvanometer now this galvanometer also works on the same principle but this is the miniature form of the thing which we are going to learn in this video so the basic definition of a galvanometer or a moving coil galvanometer is that it is a sensitive instrument used for detecting and measuring small electric current okay this is important that it is used to detect small electric current okay so previously we have seen that if we have a current loop okay now if this loop is placed so here this is the loop and it is placed between the pole pieces of two magnets so this magnet two magnets are used to set up a magnetic field so that means this current carrying loop it is placed in a magnetic field and we have seen that if the loop is placed in a magnetic field now depending upon the orientation of the coil the net, though the net force on the coil will be zero but it can experience a torque okay now this torque will try to rotate the coil okay so as you can see here these forces on these two parts they cancels out okay but here the forces acting on the long longer sides although the forces they cancel but since they are acting have acting in opposite direction have and have different lines of action they will produce a torque okay so basically here this f1 and f2 they will constitute a couple that is these two forces have equal magnitude and they are acting in opposite direction and this will produce a torque causing the coil to rotate okay so that means if a current carrying coil if a current carrying coil and if it is placed in a magnetic field if it is placed in a magnetic field it is going to experience a torque and that torque is going to rotate the coil so basically we can say that moving coil galvanometer it is working on the principle that the working principle of it is that it works on the fact that when a current carrying coil is kept in a magnetic field it experiences a torque okay and this torque causes the coil to rotate okay so this is the working principle of moving coil galvanometer so basically we have learned two things now one is galvanometer it is an instrument used to detect and measure small electric current okay and number two we have learned that it works on the principle that a current carrying coil placed or kept in a magnetic field experience a torque and which causes the coil to rotate so next let us study about the construction okay construction of a moving coil galvanometer okay so this is the basic structure of a moving coil galvanometer okay so here this m m n o p so this is a coil okay so this is a coil with large number of turns okay large number of turns of insulated copper wires okay and it is wound over a frame made of non-magnetic material such as copper so this coil is wound over a non-magnetic material so this is the 
non magnetic material okay so basically you can also use a soft iron core so this is a cylindrical soft iron core okay now the purpose of this soft iron core is to make the field uniform okay now field is set up by use of these two magnets okay now as you can see the poles of the two magnets it is not flat but it is a bit radial okay this is field is produced by this radial poles is also radial so the one thing is the radial field is provided by the radial poles of this magnet and the second thing is this cylindrical soft iron core it also makes the field radial okay now the purpose of making the field radial is so that the coil experience a uniform field this coil should experience a uniform magnetic field okay now this coil is suspended from a rigid support okay this is the rigid support and it is suspended with the help of a phosphor bronze wire so this is a phosphor bronze wire or phosphor bronze strip okay now here this m this m this circular part this is a concave mirror okay this is a concave mirror now this coil this is the bottom part so here there is a spring now this spring is called hair spring now it is called hair spring because this spring is very thin okay and again this spring is also made of same material this phosphor bronze so this wire which is used for suspending the coil is phosphor bronze and this spring is also made of phosphor bronze the other end of the spring is fixed to this terminal okay and this entire structure is placed inside a uh, says a box okay now box is so that it is not disturbed by external say air flow or and all okay and when the current flows okay when the current flows in the galvanometer now when the current flows see this is a coil this is a coil and it is placed in a magnetic field produced by these two magnets so that means when the current flows in this coil okay so how the current flows see this is terminal t1 so current one terminal is this one and the other terminal it is t2 so basically the current flows in this direction and then emerges out okay so when the current flows in the coil basically when the current flows in the coil so we have already know that when a current carrying coil is placed in a magnetic field it should experience a torque okay so that torque is going to rotate the coil okay so basically this is about the construction of a moving coil galvanometer next let us discuss the theory and working of moving coil galvanometer okay so as we have already seen like a current carrying coil placed in a magnetic field it is going to experience a torque and the torque is going to rotate the coil and this is the working principle of the moving coil galvanometer so here also when the current is passed through the coil a deflecting torque acts on the coil okay now this deflecting torque will try to rotate the coil okay and as a result the coil starts turning now as we have seen that the coil also has a hair spring at the bottom part so the sus suspension wire gets twisted okay so here the suspension wire that is connected okay here this suspension wire this suspension wire is twisted so there is restoring torque developed in the suspension wire the restoring torque is also developed in this spring okay so basically when the current flows there is a deflecting torque which causes this coil to rotate okay and the restoring torque is produced by this suspension wire as well as this hair spring so that tries to restore the original position of the coil okay so what happens the at equilibrium at the position where both the deflecting torque and the restoring torque becomes equal okay so at that position we will record the reading we will observe the deflection in the galvanometer okay so deflecting torque it is given by 
tau is equal to n i a b cos alpha okay now this part this formula we have already seen in the derivation for that torque on a current coil placed in a magnetic field okay now restoring torque this is produced in the uh, suspension wire as well as in the spring so it is c into theta okay here alpha and theta is also defined alpha is the angle which the plane of the coil makes with the direction of the magnetic field and theta is the angle through which the coil has turned okay now previously we have seen that like uh, for spring we have f is equal to kx okay f is equal to kx that is when the spring suppose this is a spring and it is pulled so that there will be restoring force and that is given by this f is equal to kx now similarly if you have a spring and now this spring is rotated okay here in this case the torque is causing the coil to rotate and the when the coil rotates the spring rotates and the suspension wire also rotates so during rotation suppose the coil rotates through an angle theta okay so here a restoring torque will produce in the opposite direction in the spring so that is given by tau is equal to c into theta tau is equal to c into theta here theta is the twist in the coil and c is called the c the c is called couple per unit twist like in uh, elongation we have f is equal to kx this k is called spring constant and it depends on the nature of material of the spring similarly this c also depends on the nature of material of the spring so at equilibrium we have this relation deflecting torque equal to restoring torque and we have ni ab cos alpha is equal to c theta now another important thing is see here this is the coil and and this coil is wound over a soft iron core okay and which is producing a radial magnetic field now the advantage of having a radial magnetic field is like see now here this is the coil and this is the direction of the magnetic field now if the coil is in this position here we will have this magnetic field so whatever may be the position of the coil the magnetic field is always parallel to the plane of the coil now when the magnetic field is parallel to plane of the coil this angle alpha will be equal to zero now if alpha is equal to zero n i a b cos alpha becomes n i a b so the n i a b is equal to c theta so theta becomes equal to n a b by c into i now here n is the number of turns in the coil which is a constant a is the area of the coil it is a constant b is the strength of the magnetic field it is a constant c is couple per unit twist which is depending on the nature of the phosphor bronze wire that is used for suspension as well as the hair spring so all these terms are constant all these terms are constant so that means i is proportional to theta i is proportional to theta so that is we can say that deflection this blue color statement okay the deflection of the coil is directly proportional to the current flowing through the coil okay so the deflection is produced by the current and greater will be the deflection if the greater is the magnitude of the current okay so deflection is pro proportional to the strength of current flowing through the coil okay so this is the essential feature of a galvanometer now let us talk about the sensitivity of the moving coil galvanometer now obviously see for this is not only for galvanometer this is true for any instrument that an instrument is said to be sensitive if it is able to detect small signal small current small voltage whatever okay so similarly here also we can say that a galvanometer here the galvanometer uh, is sensitive if it can detect extremely small current okay so now let us talk about the sensitivity of a galvanometer okay now in general for any instrument whether it is galvanometer ammeter voltmeter or any measuring device it is said to be sensitive if it is able to detect small values okay small temperature small length small current okay so similarly here also we can say that a galvanometer is sensitive if it can detect small current okay 
that means even for small current it should produce large deflection for small current it should produce significant current means significant deflection actually this should be deflection okay this is not current this should be deflection that means even for small current there should be large deflection okay so even for small current if there is large deflection so you will be able to detect the small current okay so here we define two quantities one is current sensitivity denoted by the symbol is okay now current sensitivity is it is phi or theta whatever the symbol you use for deflection so deflection produced per unit current okay current sensitivity is deflection produced per unit current so here in uh, the video which i have discussed deflection i have denoted by theta in your ncrt they have denoted by the symbol phi okay so here mistakenly i have written phi but whatever be careful that this phi is actually representing deflection so current sensitivity it is defined as deflection produced per unit current okay deflection produced per unit current that is the definition of current sensitivity okay now already we have seen in the previous slide that uh, we have theta is equal to n a b by c into i okay theta is the deflection i is the current okay so here we have or here we have theta that is represented here as phi so this phi phi by i is the current sensitivity so we can write phi by i is equal to n a b by k n a b by k okay so this is the expression for current sensitivity okay so obviously see if this is current sensitivity and if you want to increase the current sensitivity so that means we have to increase the value of n if we increase the numerator current sensitivity is going to decrease if we increase the numerator the current sensitivity is going to increase okay so by in is can be increased is is the current sensitivity so it can be increased by increasing a increasing n increasing a means area of the coil increasing n means increasing the number of coils number of turns in the coil increasing b means using strong magnetic field and decreasing k so you have to decrease k so it is for this reason phosphor bronze wire is used okay so phosphor bronze has low value of k now next let us talk about voltage sensitivity denoted by the symbol vs okay so voltage sensitivity again it is like current sensitivity is deflection produced per unit current voltage sensitivity will be deflection produced per unit voltage deflection produced per unit voltage so v is i into r where r is the resistance of the coil so v is equal to phi by i r okay now phi by i we already know as n a b by k so this becomes phi by i r becomes this term n a b by k r so here we have this is the expression as the expression for voltage sensitivity okay now one thing we need to be careful that increasing the current sensitivity does not imply the corresponding increase in voltage sensitivity increasing is current sensitivity does not imply a corresponding increase in voltage sensitivity why it is so like see current sensitivity it was given by n a b by k isn't it and voltage sensitivity is given by n a b by k r so now when you increase n to increase the current sensitivity you can increase n now when you increase n say we increase n by double the amount current also current sensitivity also doubles okay but when you increase n number of turns that means the coil length is going to increase now if the coil length is going to increase the resistance is also going to increase by the same amount so if we double the number of turns is doubles okay that is current sensitivity doubles however on increasing n r also increases r also doubles so when n increases from n to twice n r increases from r to twice r so as a result voltage vs remains this voltage sensitivity remains same okay so when n is doubled r is also doubled so if both the things are doubled vs will remain same okay so there will not be any change in the voltage sensitivity okay so this is about voltage sensitivity so next let us see how a gallometer can be converted into an emitter and a voltmeter okay 
Now to understand the conversion of a galvanometer to ammeter or a voltmeter, first of all we need to understand the difference between the two. Okay. If we are able to understand the difference between the two, the conversion process becomes much easier. Okay. Now as you know, the basic thing about ammeter is it is an instrument which is used to measure strength of current. Okay. And what is voltmeter? Voltmeter is used to measure voltage. Or potential difference so this is the first difference between ammeter and voltmeter now ammeter since it is used to measure current it is always connected in series in a circuit okay now in a circuit if you have to me measure the current you have to connect the ammeter in series now similarly in a series if you have to measure the potential difference or a voltage how will you connect a voltmeter it is always connected in parallel in a circuit so voltmeter it is always connected in parallel okay so this thing is very important voltmeter is connected in parallel and ammeter is connected in series now since ammeter is connected in series it must have low resistance okay otherwise it is going to affect the current so it is always advisable that the ammeter should always have low resistance okay whereas voltmeter now since it is connected in parallel it must have high resistance so voltmeter is a high resistance device in fact for an ideal voltmeter we say that it has infinite resistance like potentiometer we say that it is a ideal voltmeter because potentiometer has infinite resistance so voltmeter should always have high resistance and emitter should always have low resistance okay so this is the first important thing in regard to when you study about the conversion process of a galvanometer to ammeter you must have this information like ammeter is a device of low resistance and voltmeter is a device of high resistance so next let us see how to convert a galvanometer into an ammeter okay so this is galvanometer to ammeter conversion now remember ammeter is a low resistance device so what we do a galvanometer this is a galvanometer so g represents the galvanometer resistance okay so this is a galvanometer now in parallel with the galvanometer we will connect a low resistance okay so this resistance s it is the low resistance which is connected in parallel across the galvanometer now this is called a shunt resistance okay now in studying the concept of series as par and parallel combination of resistors we have seen that if a high resistance is connected in parallel across a low resistance. Now this is a high resistance, galvanometer is a high resistance device and a low resistance is connected in parallel across a high resistance. So whenever a low resistance is connected in parallel across a high resistance, the overall resistance of the circuit becomes low. So this is the reason behind connecting this shunt resistance because a meter is a low resistance device galvanometer has a well defined high resistance so we have to convert a high resistance device into a low resistance device so that is done by connecting a shunt resistance okay so now we have a shunt resistance connected in par parallel across a galvanometer now this i is the current that is to be measured by this emitter now this galvanometer with a shunt resistance this entire circuit will act like a emitter so this is the current we are going to measure okay so i current is entering the circuit now IG is the current that flows through the galvanometer. So if I current is coming from this side, IG goes through this side to the galvanometer. So the current which is flowing through the shunt, it is I minus IG. Okay. Now this galvanometer and shunt, they are in parallel. So if they are in parallel, what will happen? The voltage across them will be same. So VG equal to VG, VS. VG means potential drop across galvanometer. VS means voltage across shunt. So this voltage is equal, potential difference is equal. So if G is the galvanometer resistance, what will be the potential difference across the galvanometer? That is this current IG times the galvanometer resistance. So IGG is equal to, now current flowing through the shunt, it is I minus IG. So it is I minus IG times S. So from this we get the value of the shunt resistance. Okay. Now this formula will be used for numericals. Now while using numericals, you need to understand the meaning of each term here here i is the emitter range okay because ig is the current for maximum deflection in the galvanometer so if ig is the current 
for maximum deflection in the galvanometer so that means see ig current will flow through the galvanometer when i current enters the circuit okay now this entire circuit is acting as a meter so that means this emitter is going to detect this current provided this current produces maximum deflection in the galvanometer so i is the emitter range ig is the current for maximum deflection in the galvanometer and g g is represent here the galvanometer resistance okay so using this formula you can calculate the value of the shunt that is required to get an emitter of range i provided you know this ig and g okay so this is how you can convert a galvanometer into an emitter now next let us see how to convert a galvanometer to a voltmeter now we know that voltmeter is a high resistance device okay so how to convert a galvanometer into a voltmeter that is we have to increase the resistance of the galvanometer so in series with the galvanometer we will connect a high resistance so this r is a high resistance so it is connected in series with the galvanometer okay so now this current ig enters the voltmeter now this galvanometer in series with the resistor high resistance this is called a voltmeter this is going to behave like a voltmeter so this ig current is entering the circuit so v is the potential drop okay so if v is the total potential drop g is this galvanometer resistance r is the resistance high resistance that is connected in series with this so total resistance will be g plus r ig is the current entering so current times total resistance gives the voltage the voltage drop across this so from this we have r equal to v by ig minus g okay now what is this ig ig is the current for which the galvanometer gives full deflection so that means beyond this if current comes the galvanometer will not be able to detect that means see the deflection will be suppose the galvanometer is having this reading from 0 to 3 now if the current is exceeding is high value current so that the deflection is more than 3 then this galvanometer will not function it will become worthless okay so that means for this particular current the galvanometer is giving full deflection that means that is the maximum current that can flow through the galvanometer and for that current you get a particular potential drop and that will be the voltmeter range so here this v represents the voltmeter range ig is against the current for maximum deflection in the galvanometer so from this you can get the value of the resistance that is required to be correct connected in series with the galvanometer to produce the required voltmeter okay so this is the basic uh, structure for the conversion of galvanometer to voltmeter now let us solve one question based on this concept that we have discussed just now so question says a galvanometer of resistance 15 ohm gives a full scale deflection for a current of 2 milliampere calculate the shunt resistance needed to convert it into an emitter of range 0 to 5 ampere okay so this is 5 ampere so emitter range is 5 ampere so that means this is i the current for maximum deflection in the galvanometer 2 milliampere that means this is ig but i is given in ampere ig is given in milliampere so that means you have to convert this into ampere that is 2 into 10 power minus 3 ampere galvanometer resistance is 15 ohm that is g okay now we have to convert the galvanometer into ammeter so the formula is s equal to g i g divided by i minus ig g is the galvanometer resistance Ig is the current for maximum deflection in the galvanometer that is 2 milliampere so that is 2 into 10 power minus 3 ampere i is emitter range so this is 5 ampere so this is 5 minus ig i minus ig so 5 minus 2 into 10 power minus 3 so simplifying this we have 6 into 10 power minus 3 ohm so that means this resistance 6 into 10 power minus 3 ohm must be connected in parallel with 15 ohm resistance of the galvanometer to get an emitter of range 0 to 5 ampere okay so this is the final answer but you have to write it actually 6 into 10 power minus 3 ohm connected in parallel with the galvanometer